Hey everybody, this is a garden and herb harvest from our own uh, kitchen or our own yard. We've got a nice bit of herbs here, nice handful of herbs. There's a huge bunch of herbs there. Oh, oh, it smells good. I love it. Mm. We got some Swiss chard and we got some basil and we got some sage. Got, I think down in here, there's some kale. There's a uh, long green bean, extra long green bean. There's a bunch of summer squash, I think four or five, Melanie? Four. Four. There's a whole mess of cherry tomatoes. Um, there's a larger tomato. There's a couple peppers. Did you get just uh, the one so just far? Just one. One. So this is a beautiful... And lemongrass. Oh, and lemongrass, yep. Yeah. Beautiful uh, harvest. Oh, it's, these are spring onions from the aquaponics, right? Yeah. Cool. So that's the first. Well, not actually. She's been eating uh, spring onions before. That's a big harvest from the aquaponics lab. Yeah, but that one is going to be dry. So nice, massive of stuff there from our garden. It's starting, people. It's starting. There it is. Looking good and smells good. Went to open the cupboard and I can't. Melanie is going to paint the cupboards and she's taking off the handles and preparing it herself. It's Melanie's kitchen so Melanie is doing what she wants here and uh, that's her project today. I'll show you what we're doing outside. Over here been cutting down some trees and uh, chopping it up for firewood. I wanted to use it on the mill but it's not very good. This isn't good for firewood either. There's not much left of it. The rest is all rotted. Looks like ants. Yeah, it's all been mined out by ants. Uh, so I just cut it all up. It'll, the worst of it will go for bonfires. And then the good stuff near the end here, I'll split it and use it for in the house for daytime heating. Well, that's BTUs. It's a little bit of BTUs. And then the smaller branches like this will go in the wood stove in the shop. That's all dry, really dry. And then over here, we've got a, a double tree down that's been bothering me. This was a uh, very large double tree that was dead and I didn't want that coming down on me at random so that was sort of dangerous and look at that how many branches and twigs are on that stuff so right now I've got a friend over and he's helped me sharpen the chainsaw while I do a little quick video of what's going on and I'm gonna come out here and finish trimming this up that was a big tree and even though it was dead there's still some moisture in there well maybe not too much looks moist and this had my uh, ants in it too a little bit of rot on the ends but I'm thinking and hoping I can get some good lumber out of this one on the mill so I might take I don't know how strong the wood will be in the seam where these two are but I might take a chunk like this here and then put that on the mill and see what I can get out of that run it this way the, the high the height of it and run it through a few times and see what I can get out of that and make some crafts with it and then depending on how the base is of the the trunks of the two trees where it splits and see what I can get out of there see if it's if I can get any one by fours or anything out of that I'll open it up on the mill and see what it looks like but what I can't run on the mill uh, what's no good for the mill is going in the fire pit or in the uh, wood stove for for winter heating of our tiny house, our off-grid tiny house. And then there's a lot of these branches I'll trim out and we'll stack for firewood for the wood shop. This year I'm going to have a good start on both the wood shop and the off-grid tiny house heating. I hauled two wheelbarrow loads of logs over from that one tree and then I flaked off the tree bark into the wheelbarrow as I stacked it into the pile of wood to be split. 
and that's not a bad amount of uh, tree bark which is going to be mulch for the garden pathways from a single tree keep this up using everything all the resources I have uh, we're gonna have a really nice homestead here soon just using everything we've got Melanie is painting her, her kitchen and herself by the appearance of it that's Melanie's first ever paint job we've got everything protected and, and uh, prepared and uh, we'll do touching up with a paintbrush and the corners and edges and probably gonna do two coats we she it's all on Melanie that's her thing she didn't want me to help I liked it she didn't want me to help she said give me the paintbrush so there it is well guys our tiny house is a little bit of a construction zone today but the kitchen will certainly be brighter and cheery that was all dark brown and uh, she's been wanting to paint them for a while I've got to get her a small brush and then she's got to go out and paint all the drawers and all the doors we're gonna she took the doors off here but we decided that after we started up here we're gonna have to take them off and uh, do them uh, retouch them tomorrow but everything's gonna get a second coat anyway when it's done well that's how it is so far day is coming to an end I'm resting and rehydrating and then I'll show you what uh, I've been up to outside working on the lumber mill a little bit well guys day is coming to a close I am exhausted absolutely exhausted did a lot of cutting today out in the woods and then brought a chunk over not a big piece but brought a piece over and tried it on the sawmill it cuts nice boy this aged wood has almost a, a cross between a turpentine and pine smell and it's really really nice it's a really strong smell I like it so this is uh, the first cut it's already starting to dry and cure this is you can see the rot in the wood it was a dead standing tree here's a lot of sap down in here that's where you get your strong smell I can't believe how rotten it was inside but this will probably be a piece for crafting I'm not sure look at this side though that same piece look at this side of the wood how pretty it is how clean um, the deeper you get inside and in the next piece, going to be a beautiful wood grain patterns in here. Look at the swirls and the knot. Different, uh, different patterns. That's going to be a beautiful piece of wood. Depends on how bad it cracks and how bad the uh, there's some cracks in it from the the rot. I don't know how bad it'll crack. We'll see how it looks. It's already starting to cure. There's the other side of it, dusty. Anyway, there's some serious cracks on here from, from the rot from the outside in. So we'll let it dry and see how it looks. And then the next piece, it's already drying just since I cut it and splitting. Like really splitting bad since I cut it. Look at that. Deep, deep cracks. It's drying fast. So that whole piece is going to come off. Now this one, the um, the log isn't very big. And here it got thinner on the end. The log spun in the clamp. You can see it's thick here. And got thinner down at the end. The log spun in the clamp. But it's again, beautiful pattern, beautiful green different colors. I'm sure I can figure out something to do with it. Once it do, it's done splitting and doing what it's going to do, see ya, that's a big crack. Because that's, that's the dead wood and this is the wet moist wood inside. So the dead wood is splitting off right here. You can really see it splitting. But we'll see what's use, useful after it's dry. 
see if I can get some boards out of that use it for something but this was just an experiment it was nothing major it was uh, just a small piece of tree you see not very big at all and there was only one clamp holding it so when I got near to the end it spun a little bit and twisted on me actually the tree itself is twisting um, from the heat of the chainsaw cutting through it the whole thing started twisting because it's small size and probably because of the two different uh, the wet and the dry right there it's cracking here this is all rotted wood this is all rotten wood there wasn't any much good meat in there well, you can see on the end that was all rotted so that'll go in the wood stove right there's the only good wood left on that that'll go in the wood stove for heating a off-grid tiny house um, nothing gets wasted. The piece I cut off, I don't know if I end up doing something with it. That looks like a some kind of a creature right there of some kind. I don't know if I'll end up doing some crafting with it or whatever, but let it dry. See how it looks afterwards. A lot of sap in there right there. Really, really, really sap. Uh, full of sap right there. This, um, my chainsaw started out sharp. But because I didn't do a good job, it was my first time ever by hand. You can see it dulled up real fast. It wasn't very sharp in the end. It dulled up fast. But I'll tell you what, it cut better than uh, it did the first time. And oh, that smells so good. That is uh, just so good smelling. I might put some of that in like a potpourri in the house. I love that smell. So I definitely have to ch sharpen it again. But now that I know what I'm doing... I'll get a better sharpen on it. I'll get it better. And, uh, but it really, really, really cut smooth this time. Even on that longer piece. So, big difference. Once I get it properly sharpened, it's really going to go well. And there's my old home light, old blue SXL that powers it with really, really nice. I mean, seriously, it made, it, made a difference. Cut it with, with ease. Uh, but it's a small piece. So anyway, that's uh, some experimenting. I didn't do any video of it today because I was just playing around. But maybe next time we'll get the camera going. I'll take you out and show you some more trees we were cutting down. Oof. So that I did earlier, as you saw. And then up in here, all the brush. I've got to mulch all the brush take out any logs we gotta get the wheelbarrow over here and haul out any logs that are going on the log for the firewood pile and then we start to get a little bit thicker to where I'm gonna to have to start splitting them and then here's a piece I want to play with on the mill that's about an eight foot seven or eight foot piece not very thick but again I'm, I'm experimenting and learning how to cut so I'm gonna use scrap wood like that for now it's not very thick and there's the base I think because of how it's how it's uh, veed off, I might be able to get this on the mill in such a way that I can take. There's a straight edge here. I'd like to be able to start cutting this way, and it's very wide this way. So I might be able to get some really nice boards out of that, because that's that's clean wood. That's really good clean wood. So I'm going to try to f figure out if I can. You know what I might do lay it down on this side first right because that's flat and then cut it on this side to get a flat surface because that's going to be all scrap on that half and then flip it back over and start cutting my boards out of here because that's a really wide piece of wood and uh, I think I can get some decent boards out of there for crafting or whatever but we'll see that'll be for the next day tomorrow probably but I got all the brush I've got to haul out next. Some more brush piles ready for the mulching machine. And over here is a couple trees. Still got more to clear out. Um, this is all going to be firewood. Really easy cutting there. That's really easy. Although, if I can figure a way, I'm wondering if I can get a 4x4 four four out of that. 4x4x8. Four by four by I might try to get a 4x4x8 four by four by out of that on the lumber mill tomorrow. Just to see 
what I can get out of a little piece like that. That might be fun to play with. And then there's a lot of nice firewood there. So there's a couple trees here. And then there's a, I'm not a tree expert. This is flat leafed. What is that, like a spruce, I think? Or is that cedar? I'm no expert on these, especially the baby tree. But um, that's a very rare one out here. And then there's two more trees. There's a small one and then an old rotted one. I'm gonna have a nice amount of firewood though. So probably after dinner, I'll haul in the ones that I got cut up already. And tomorrow I'll finish cutting this up. Take it on over to the wood pile. I plan on having a couple cords of pine, a couple cords of hardwood, and a couple cords of mixed soft and hardwoods for this winter. Guys, I wasn't gonna do a video on this till Melanie told me. This is all 100% homegrown. Summer squash, chicken, and there's some uh, long beans. All from our homestead, 100% homegrown. That is really cool.